Sammy Marks Square in central Pretoria is one of the best known landmarks in South Africa's capital city. But how many people know who Sammy Marks was? The 20th of February 2020 marked the 100th anniversary of the passing of this iconic Jewish immigrant to South Africa. Marx made a great impact on South Africa's industrial, political and social landscapes and was a great contributor to both the Jewish community and South Africa as a whole. Sammy Marx was born in a small town in the Russian Empire, a small town in Lithuania called Neustadt. He was born in 1844 and at a very early age, uh, 18, he leaves uh, the Tsarist Empire, leaves Lithuania and he sails for England and he makes his way to Sheffield in England, which at that stage is the heart of the Industrial Revolution. And he uh, um, spends a, a while in Sheffield before moving off uh, to South Africa at the age of 24, he arrives in South Africa in 1868. But he's joined by a cousin called Isaac Lewis. And at first they uh, make a living by becoming uh, peddlers they peddle in the uh, Western Cape, they accumulate uh, some capital. But what is crucial for both of them is the discovery of what is to become the great diamond discoveries at Kimberley. And what they do, uh, these two young men, is they load up a wagon with goods and they set off uh, for the north. So when they get to Kimberley, they discover that there's much more money to be made in, uh, in diamonds than there is in selling goods. And Samuel Marx's first fortune which he makes during the 1870s is in diamonds. Now, one of the big problems about the Kimberley diamond fields is that there's insufficient fuel. You need fuel to run the steam engines for the, uh, for the mines. And he hears about the discovery of coal on the banks of the Baal River, near today what is Vernachen. He goes up there and he um, acquires these coal fields. But on the same trip, he goes to Pretoria and he meets with Paul Kruger, who is to become a critical figure in the rest of his uh, career. They have this sort of meeting, they get on very well, and Sammy Marx indicates his interest in the Transvaal, and Paul Kruger indicates that he's willing to support Marx in his business adventures in uh, the Transvaal. Sammy Marx's career in the, in, in the, in the 1880s is that of a pioneering industrialist. He owns a, a, a coal mine, but at the same time he begins to invest in uh, industry in the Transvaal. And he is the founder of the, literally of the first factory, what is called Esther Fabriken, the first factory in the Transvaal. And it's at a place called Hatherley, which is close by Pretoria, and it is a liquor distillery. 1886, a very important year in South African economic history, because that's when Gold is discovered on the Vitvatis front. Sammy Marx is very excited about this. He contacts his partner, who's no longer in South Africa. His, his partner is now overseas. He writes to his partner and he says to his partner, we should buy these properties because they're going to be very valuable. His partner, though, is a much more conservative individual than he is, his cousin Isaac Lewis. He says, we overextended at the moment. Let's not do this. And Sammy Marx says in his letter, we, we're going to regret this. And boy, does he regret it because the effect of this is that when the gold mining industry gets going, Sammy Marx doesn't have a major stake in what is to become the greatest economic enterprise in South Africa, the gold mines of the Transvaal. Now, Sammy Marx's business career depends very much on his connection with the Transvaal government. Transvaal government supports his uh, various business enterprises, which include glass factory, a jam factory, the liquor distillery. So he does develop a very intimate and close relationship with uh, Paul Kruger. Sammy Marx visits Paul Kruger at his house, which is still in Church Street in Pretoria today. They sit on the uh, stoop and they, they talk about all sorts of things. They become very close uh, and, and, and intimate friends. At the same time, Sammy Marx does various favors for Paul Kruger. He helps Paul Kruger to become a wealthy man through a sale of a farm um, that, uh, that Sammy Marx helps to arrange. He organizes loans for the South African Republic. He uh, makes sure that Paul Kruger gets a very nice birthday present on all of his birthdays. He provides cows for Mrs. Kruger, Hetzina uh, Kruger, when hers don't produce. And as one of his most famous uh, gestures of friendship is paying for 
the Paul Kruger statue, which is still in Church Square, Pretoria today. Sammy Marks uh, is now established uh, in the Transvaal in the early um, 1880s. And in 1884, he goes back to England. We had spent part of his young adulthood and he comes back with a bride. And the bride is um, 18 years younger than him. She's 22 and her name is Bertha Goodman. And he brings her out to South Africa. And once they're in the Transvaal back in uh, Pretoria, he sets about building a house. He acquires a place called Swatkopis, which is east of Pretoria. And the house is really an English country house. That's the best way to describe it. And it's a house with all modern convenience, a wonderful house. Sammy Marks came to South Africa as a Lithuanian immigrant with very little in 1869. By 1884, he had established himself in business and had made influential friends like Paul Kruger. He had also married Bertha Gutmann, who he brought out from England. They settled on the farm Swatkopis. Bertha Marks was not terribly sociable, unlike her husband. And uh, her pleasures are her garden. She's a great uh, gardener. She imports roses from, from Europe. She also gets very involved in rearing chickens. She also spends a lot of time uh, on trips back to, to uh, Europe. When she's in Europe, she is a shopaholic. She buys very extensively and uh, brings these out to South Africa. And in one of the many letters between husband and wife, he complains about her shopping habits. He says, what are you planning to do with all these things? Are you sending out to South Africa? Are you planning to open a shop at uh, Swat Copies? So he complains about her uh, spending habits. She also has a very large domestic staff at uh, Swat Copies. These are, these are effectively English gentry. They're leading an English gentry lifestyle. So they have many servants working for them, black and white. Uh, white servants who brought out from, uh, from Europe. She had this butler and she had these Irish maids. She was famous for the Irish maids because in those days it was that potato famine. And she had an um, average of about 13 Irish maids, sometimes less, sometimes more, because they were pretty girls. And they were easy, quickly snatched up by the local farmers. And the butler, Mr. McCracken. So you can imagine, you know, they're the South Africans. The boorer were very, very formal and my one thing that I'm always very amused about is if the Buddha came knocking on the door and this very formal English butler opened the door to them. I always wondered what their reaction was. The great social day for Sammy Marks is Sunday and his um, lunches on Sunday are famous. People will come in from Pretoria, they'll sit around the table, they'll have a lavish meal and after the meal, Sammy Marks will take everybody uh, on a walk around his estate, of which he's enormously proud. And the, uh, so everybody and anybody who came to Pretoria, anybody who was famous and notable who came to visit Pretoria in those years would come out on a Sunday to, to enjoy Sammy Marx's hospitality at, uh, at Swat Copies. This was the highlight of your social life if you were ever invited to a dinner to this, in, this beautiful um, uh, dining room and the butler came and showed you your seat this is at your name card and the menu on it and then you came through that door the butler pulled out your chair and you sat down all done in style and look at these knives and forks and just look at the size of these forks but all was done done very daintily and that very practical um, meat dish. It's got these grooves and then it's tilted a little so that all the fat and sauce can run off. Sammy Marx was not a religious Jew. He was rather a, a Jew of his time. He was a South African Jew of his time. Somebody who was very proud of his Jewishness, very proud of his Jewish ethnicity, he never denied his Jewishness, unlike uh, some of his colleagues in the mining industry who 
hoped to distance themselves from things Jewish. So he was very proud of being Jewish, but he was hardly uh, religious. Um, and the reason for that is that he, for much of his life, he lived beyond the frontiers of Jewishness. When he left the Cape and he went off uh, to Kimberley, he was there before the uh, establishment of the Kimberley Hebrew congregation. And he certainly when he moved to the Transvaal, he was again beyond the frontiers of South African Jewry. So he lived a, a life away from Jews. Um, specifically, the home at Swatkop is, there was, it was not kosher in any way. I've seen the letters which include orders for uh, lobsters and, 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 uh, and other forms of trafe. And Matt Sammy Marks clearly enjoyed these because he writes letters about how tasty these, these were. They so certainly, and he's not, neither is he uh, um, Sabbath observant. Uh, he works on Saturdays. The family doesn't have anything special on Friday nights. Instead, the big meal of the day is Sunday uh, lunch for the family. The family also like a lot of acculturated uh, Anglo-Jewish families at the time um, celebrated uh, Christmas. The holidays that were important to him were Pesach, Passover, and uh, Rosh Hashanah, but he didn't go to Shul in Pretoria. He preferred to stay home on the, uh, on, on the high holidays. He slept in the separate bedroom. Certain times of the month? Yeah, for, for those certain times of the month. This is a Jewish tradition when the woman menstruated, they were uh, impure and they weren't, uh, for, according to the Bible, they weren't allowed to sleep, sleep with their husband so that they can, they, they can heal and their body can prepare itself for another pregnancy. Yeah, he's very involved though with the uh, Jewish community. He's a member both of the Cape Town Hebrew congregation, even though he doesn't live in Cape Town, for very long, and he's also, crucially, a, a, a key member of the Pretoria Hebrew Congregation, because he's the benefactor of the Pretoria Hebrew Congregation. He provides the building materials for the synagogue. He also puts up a, there's a Jewish school uh, established in Pretoria, which is named after his mother, Miriam. It's the Miriam Mark School. So he's a very important benefactor a donor towards uh, uh, Jewish causes. So he's a very generous man. So he's very generous towards Jewish causes and he's very, very generous towards non-Jewish causes as well. That's one of his hallmarks, is his generosity and his philanthropy. This beautiful bedroom and this beautiful... Sammy Marks had uh, a whole range of kids, kids. And what's interesting about them is their education. It's very important for Marks that he's Kids have the best education, so there's a, they have a governess uh, at home. But the boys in particular are sent to school, not in South Africa, they are sent abroad to private schools in, uh, in England. And the girls uh, follow suit. It's very important for somebody of his social class that, he, that his kids get the best possible education. And his view, at least, was that, this, that, that that wasn't available at the time in, in South Africa. And tradition had it in those days. That's why these rooms look small in comparison to the rest of the house. They're for the children, it's very funny if you say you're not allowed to play in your bedrooms and you're not allowed to sit on the bed. One of Sammy Marx's great concerns was that his kids should remain within the Jewish faith. And the reason for that was that he had a daughter who he sent to an Anglican school in England to get her education. And she writes back to him in about 1904, saying to him that she would like to be baptized as a Christian. This is, as you can imagine, for somebody who is proudly Jewish, like Sammy Marx, this is a bombshell. He brings her back to South Africa um, uh, um, immediately. She's, she remains at home for quite a while. They skirt around this question of her desire for baptism. And there's a wonderful letter that she writes to him it's a cri de coeur, it's a heart cry, in which he, she says to him, you've voice emphasized that you're Jewish, but I don't know what your Jewishness actually means. What is your uh, Jewishness about? She never converted to, to Christianity. He was very proud of his Jewish heritage, and he kept up the Jewish um, customs. He had his sons circumcised, but he never forced a prearranged marriage on them. She never got married. She honored his father's wishes, not out of lack of boyfriends, just because she was Jewish. She's the only one buried on this farm.
immigrant to South Africa, Sammy Marks, was a businessman, philanthropist, and family man. But he also turned out to be a peacemaker and reluctant politician. Throughout the war, quite uniquely, he remains on his farm, he remains on uh, uh, Swatkopis, despite the fact that Swatkopis is in the middle of a, a war zone. And the most important date for Sammy Marks during the war is in the middle of 1900 when the British arrive in Pretoria. And it's on that day that he switches from the Boer side to the uh, British side, which is what many people did at, at, the, at the time. It seemed to be the sensible thing. And critically, uh, in 1902, when the Boer commandos come into Ferenichen, which is his property, to make peace and to discuss peace with the British, it's on his property. And he provides electricity, provides all sorts of services. And he goes to Ferenichen and he meets with his old friends who include the key Boer generals, General Smuts, General De La Rey, and he urges them and encourages them to make peace with the British. So he plays a part, not a big part, but a small part in bringing about the peace uh, uh, in 1902. And in the wake of the war, so many Boers are destitute, so many people need um, help, and Sammy Marks goes out of his way to be helpful to people, including to his old friends like uh, General De La Rey, to help them out. Uh, financially. He's not deeply involved in politics after the war. He's, he's, he's friendly with General Boerto, who becomes the, the key figure in Transvaal politics in the post-war uh, period. And in uh, 1910, when South Africa becomes a union, he is appointed to the Senate of South Africa. He becomes a union senator, and that's recognition uh, of his services to, to South Africa. Sammy Marks' reputation as a, uh, as a great business success reaches back to, a, uh, to Lithuania. There's this place in Africa where it's possible for for people to go without means and to become wealthy. And crucially, he also maintains his ties with Lithuania. His father, uh, Mordechai Marx, lives in uh, the town of Neustadt, where he had always lived. Sammy Marx uh, keeps up his ties with his father, and he regularly sends money back uh, to uh, Lithuania. Um, and his father becomes quite a prominent gentleman in the town, in the shtetl in which uh, Sammy Marx grew up, because he's now the conduit all of this generosity coming from Africa. So he, he's, he's proud of this connection, he maintains this connection. And certainly it's argued that one of the reasons why 40,000 South African Jews came from Lithuania and Eastern Europe in the 1880s through to the 1914 to the First World War, one of the reasons for that migration, but just one of the reasons, there are lots of reasons, was the reputation that had reached Lithuania of uh, Sammy Marx's uh, um, success there. I am the wife of David, and David is the fourth generation in, in the Marx family. I feel honored to be part of this family. I think they're quite extraordinary. And I think Sammy would be very, very proud of every single one of them. The fifth generation, uh, they, are, they are incredible. Classical pianists, neurosurgeons, uh, and, and, and anaesthetists, uh, budding doctors, uh, a mechanical engineer, an actress, we have an actress. Uh, 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 they all are incredible and they're very, very special people. I used to come visit the farm uh, many times uh, during that period. Joe, who was Sammy Marx's son, um, would, lived on the farm and he managed things. And James. James was a uh, butler, um, he, he assisted Joe in every way on the farm, and he was very, very close to the family. Unfortunately, he had lost his legs, I think maybe to diabetes at this stage. And in fact, his daughter he actually is part, part of the museum now. Joe Max built the school from all of us here at the farm. And, and now, but the farm now, there's plenty of people <laughs> who who is going at this school? It was very kind of us because always when you go to the trip, they give us some money, those who got no money to go to the school. 
And I feel proud as someone Jewish that Sammy Marks actually um, is part of the South African history. Sammy Marks died a hundred years ago, in fact, this year, a hundred years ago. And Sammy Marks is a pioneer of industry in South Africa. He's a pioneer of coal mining in South Africa, and he's a pioneer of the steel industry. So for the last 10 years of his life, this, all of this is recognized. He sits in the Senate in Cape Town, and he remains a senator until his death in 1920. But I think the lessons of Sammy Marks' life or uh, about uh, entrepreneurship. That is the, 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 the principal lesson. And it's about the kind of entrepreneurial spirit that not only Sammy Marks, but other Jewish entrepreneurs brought to South Africa in the late 19th century and right through the 20th century. What is so marked about Sammy Marks is his ability to imagine the unimaginable. In this case, for example, to imagine a steelworks on the felt in, uh, in, in, in South Africa. And this is what he does. He brings, as others do later on, uh, vision, imagination, and a kind of entrepreneurial courage. That's the lesson of Samuel Marks.